All right. In this video, I want to talk about the two thieves on the cross that were next to Jesus. Now, this represents all of humanity. You have one who is saved, one is lost. And it could be this one is the one that's saved, this one's the one that's lost. You can't tell the difference, can you? Which one's the saved one, which one's the lost one? You can't tell. If you were to judge by what you see, you would see two sinners condemned to death because of their sin and justly dying for their sins, and that's that. You would not think e any one of them was saved, right? And that's the world. We're all sinners. We're all condemned to death. Now, the one who is saved, the only difference is, is that he believes on Jesus. He believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is innocent and is dying in his place. And is giving him his life. He believes the gospel. Which you can read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It's what you saved by unless you believe in vain. And that is that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. That's the gospel. Jesus died for you, went into hell, and comes back, showing that he doesn't have to pay for his own sins. That he was dying for you, not himself. So not only are you taken care of, because you've been judged and condemned, but he takes on the condemnation. But he also is pure, holy, just, and righteous. And when he gives you that life, you're, you've got a clean slate. You're good to go. Right? You believe that. You believe that in your heart. You really grasp that. That you are a sinner like these two thieves. You don't deserve heaven. You deserve what you're getting. And you deserve hell. And you say when you're up there on that cross dying, amen, because I deserve this. You get thrown into hell. You say amen, because I deserve this. You understand. You understand that you need a Savior. You believe the Savior. When you are able to grasp that in your heart, accept the truth and reality, you're saved. But to the outward the world, they can't tell the difference. There's no difference between the saved and the lost, or the saved and the lost. You know, which one is it? You can't tell. That's what I ask people sometimes. I'm like, which one was the, the thief that was saved? Was it the one on his left or the one on his right? Just to get him to think about it. Because all that is required for salvation is to believe. Right? The thief on the cross that saved... He admitted he deserved what he was getting. He was saying amen to that. He was saying Jesus doesn't deserve what he's going through. And he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. Right? That's all that's required. That thief was never water baptized. He never took part of uh, the Eucharist or any other sacrament. Didn't say any Hail Marys or Our Fathers. Uh, he didn't uh, produce fruit, do any good works. He just died. And that's all that's required for your salvation. That's what you got to think about is that's all that's needed. Or this guy, maybe it was this guy, is just to believe. And you can't tell. That's the whole point of making this video, is that the saved and the lost, you can't tell the difference. Because we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Right? And you can't see what other people believe in their heart. Right? You don't know what they're trusting in. You don't know their faith. You don't know who they really are deep inside. You don't know the relationship with God. Outwardly, you can see some people that seem very good and godly, but they're not. Like a Judas. Right? 
I mean, it's really easy to put on a facade to look like you're a Christian and that you're saved. But you can't judge by that. Like we read in Matthew chapter 7 about Jesus saying, Not everyone who calls him Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom, but the one who does the will of his Father. And there's going to be people coming up to him, calling him Lord, Lord, talking about everything they've done. Right? They think they're justified by their works. Hey, it's prophesying in your name, casting out devils in your name, and doing mighty wonderful works in your name. So yeah, I'm saved, right? They say, I never knew you. Right? You just think of it like this. Like, say, here's Jesus here. And let's just say this is the saved guy who believes. And they have a relationship now. They're talking, right? Jesus doesn't know this guy. He, and this guy was just condemning him. But he, he actually, through what he thinks is actually the power of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, he's rebuking devils out of people. He starts prophesying of things to come. In Jesus' name, uh, he heals some people who come by, right? And then he thinks, oh, right, I'm saved, right? He's the one that's saved. I mean, look at all the stuff that's coming from him. He's doing all these miracles and stuff. This is the saved one. You would actually think that because of what he's doing. But it's like, no, Jesus is like, I never knew you. And Jesus cannot say he never knew you. If you believe the gospel, you are born again of his spirit, and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, there's no way that Jesus can say he never knew you. And that's what he said to the one who's doing all these things in his name. He said, I never knew you. They're relying on those works, and those works are obviously not coming from God, but they're still good, godly works, are they not? Warning people of things to come? Casting out devils? You know, there's a spirit there that deceived him, making him think that he's saved, and getting other people to think that he's the saved one and following him. Because this guy is like, oh, he just believes. And like we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, it's the foolishness of the cross that just gets people to turn away. But to those that are saved, it's the power of God. And it's by the foolishness of preaching that uh, God uses to save those that believe. I think that's verse 21 of the same chapter. So, yeah, I think I made my point. I could go on and restate it in some different ways or maybe add more detail to it, but I think the point is made clear here. Thanks for watching and take care.